Hello everyone, it's Joshua, and I'm back with something that's quite exciting for me personally. Um, as you can already see from what's on the screen, uh, it's about multiplayer. Now, I uh, love multiplayer games, I and the majority of game ideas I want to make involve multiplayer, because I like to play with friends, I like to play with other people. Um, not to say anything that's wrong with single-player games, but this is my personal interest. And for the longest time I've been really interested in how does multiplayer work with GDevelop, and there's not a huge amount out there. Um, so I went out to try and make this as a way of like kicking that off and showing actually multiplayer isn't as hard with GDevelop, um, isn't hard with GDevelop at all, but there's a number of considerations to take into account. Now, what I'm going to be showing isn't a, uh, a perfect multiplayer implementation, but it does show you, uh, what it will show you is the tools and techniques that go into multiplayer games and how you can use them in GDevelop. So as always, um, there will be a link in the description to this tutorial scene um, and tutorial assets. And the first thing you'll notice is that um, there is a game folder and there is a server folder. Uh, yes, there is server code, and we will be going into it um, and we will be talking about it. But let's start by just talking through, uh, before we get into any code whatsoever, before we get into anything, let's just show what we get and let's have a little conversation about it. You'll see there's three scenes, basic, client prediction, and lag compensation. And these are the three levels of um, techniques that are widely used in multiplayer games in order to make them function. Uh, and I put them all here in order to walk through and demonstrate um, how they work and why they're important. So just to kick off, uh, let's, let's go through the basic. Um, now, when I click play, nothing will happen. Because, what's that? because we need a server in order for our game to work. Um, so I have my uh, terminal here, and I'm going to run my server code. And now when I uh, open the game, I'll see a little white ball. And I can move the, use the arrow keys to move around. And I'm going to pin that to the side, and I'm going to start a second one. And you'll notice that um, on each screen, the white ball represents you, and the red ball represents someone else. And this, this is actually connecting over the server. If this server was not here, these two things would not work. Um, I can demonstrate this by uh, closing this. Well, nothing is moving because it's trying to pass commands and it's not working. So this seems to be working quite well, right? Like it seems to be syncing up quite well and seems to be uh, handling itself quite responsibly. Responsively, pardon my English. Um, but this is just the basic setup. Um, and you'll notice that, oh, no idea what happened there, I guess the key got stuck. You'll notice that uh, there are two uh, settings, lag and refresh rate, and we'll get into each of them separately. Um, so it looks like it's working quite well now, but what happens if we introduce some lag? And if you've ever played a multiplayer game, and I know that you have, um, you know that lag is not fun. Um, and if we set lag to 150, Let's take a look at how our game behaves. So this is just a basic implementation, and without even adding another person, we can see that this is going poorly. Uh, and the way that this basic works is it sends out the, uh, every time, uh, every frame, it sends out the player's position, and uh, well, it updates the position when um, the server sends it back. And this is how early multiplayer games were made. And you can see even with a bit of lag, it's awful. Like this is, you know, the fact that you have to wait 150 milliseconds before your command comes back to you is not cool at all. <clears throat> so what can you do in order to have a better experience? Well, the easiest thing you can do is add, is do what they call client prediction. And the way client prediction works is um, rather than waiting for the, um, rather than just sending, rather than the client just acting as a dumb terminal where you send um, you send commands and you wait for them to you wait for the server to tell you what the new position is. You update your own client's position. Um, well, that's it actually. You update your own client's position and you don't you ignore what the server says about your client. And so we can see there immediately we're moving. Uh, we're back to working pretty well. Um, it updates really nicely for us and it's laggy. You can see that as I go left and right there is still the delay, but. Our client isn't, you know, um, isn't experiencing that delay because we are updating our command straight away. 
And this is great. This means that as a player, you get a really nice fluid experience. But what happens if the server isn't sending messages as fast? See, right now, our server is sending a message every five milliseconds. That's what refresh rate is. Um, but if you have an authoritative server, it might send anywhere from 30 um, messages a second to like four messages a second. Well, how does that look then? Well, if we set our refresh rate, uh, instead of being every five milliseconds to every uh, 300 milliseconds, this is the experience that we are uh, about to unleash on ourselves. Oh my word. So what, see, what's happening is that um, on our left screen, our player, as far as we're concerned, we're doing fine. We're roaming around, we're doing our thing. But for the other side, well, they every 300 milliseconds, they receive a new update and we just jump there. And this is, you know, this looks like lag gone wrong. Um, so how do we deal with this? And this is where we come to the last of our techniques um, that we'll be covering. And this is called lag compensation. And in lag compensation, and I'll just run it straight for you just to see the results. Remember, these are the exact same uh, settings, 150 milliseconds of lag, 300 milliseconds of uh, server thing. And you can see that it's moving nice and smoothly. Um, the way lag compensation works is uh, rather, rather than showing exactly where the player is at any given frame, um, the uh, it's up for the other system to slowly smo uh, smoothly move the player between the last known position and the current known position. So technically, you're always seeing the other person in the past, but you were seeing them move slowly in the past, and uh, that actually works really well. Um, and that's how that is the main that's the main technique that's currently used in multiplayer games. Um, if I turn the refresh rate. Uh, down a bit. There you go. It's all dancing around and it's all working. Um, now let's get into the code and let's explain how this works. Um, I will very briefly explain the server code. Uh, I wrote it in Go because this is what I'm comfortable with from work. Um, you could honestly write your server in JavaScript, you could write your server in whatever you wanted to carry a pigeon if you are so uh, inclined. Um, so I will very, so this code is commented and uh, if you want to dig into it, um, you're welcome to. Um, it's not, it's really not super necessary. Um, the main part is that we take in these two flags, uh, lag and refresh, and then when we receive a message, and then what we have down here is we have a loop. And um, every refresh milliseconds, um, we go through and send broadcast to all the players. Um, we broadcast to all the players the latest position of every player. And we add a, uh, a bit of lag because uh, we add, we add a, a special sleep to simulate lag. Uh, and that's how it functions. Um, as I said, if you've you know, if JavaScript is a bit of a stretch for you, uh, this must look like complete garbage. And honestly, uh, you can get by without thinking too hard about it. Um, but from the GDevelop perspective, this is how it works. And we are dealing with the magic of WebSockets, which needs, uh, because it's built into JavaScript, it needs nothing more than this. So you'll see that in uh, every file, we'll start with this kind of basic syntax. Um, at the beginning of the scene, we create a new WebSocket and connect it to, to our local server, um, create a random ID for our player, and then we add some callbacks. Um, so on open is called when we connect to the server. And when we connect to the server, we send a, uh, a new player command with some data, and we give it a specific data, a specific thing to send. And then on message is called whenever our server sends us a message. And here you can see the three different kinds of messages we can receive. New player, movement, or refresh players. So new player is called whenever a new player enters the game. Movement is whenever the server is sending some kind of movement update. And refresh player is something that 
uh, each client sends out. Um, ideally, this would there'll be an authoritative server, um, and you can. Uh, I'll leave you to go away and look up exactly the difference between authoritative and client, and like peer to peer. But basically, um, when our when a new player joins the game, they don't know anything about any other players. And so what we do when a new player joins, we send a refresh, which basically says, oh, by the way, here's a player that you need to know about. Um, and so we can see here, if a new player is created, we create a new player. Um, if this isn't our player, we color it red. And then we send a refresh, uh, we send a refresh message uh, with our player. And so this ensures that both, both uh, sides know about every player that exists because otherwise um, and actually I can show you the impact of this by uh, commenting this out and uh, let me just cancel this and let me just load it with the default settings just to keep self keep stuff simple um, so we got our player one and then we got our player two uh, so with our current imp implementation player one knows about both player one and player two but player two doesn't know any, about any of it because, well, they've just joined and they don't get it. Um, so I, I create, I do this refresh so that all players know about each other. Symbols. Um, and finally, uh, in the basic example, this is the movement when uh, when movements received just you know set x and y, and then you've got this whole loop that goes every frame and that just checks. Um, is uh, is the left, the right, the up, or the down key pressed, um, and then submit the new position. So this is how basic works. It just submits the new position and then it updates it here, which is why it's where well, as soon as you start to add some lag, the uh, the players start to go completely wild because you know it's updating with lag. So in client prediction, uh, it really is a simple client prediction is really as simple as saying. Well, uh, and I'll open basic up just for comparison. Um, so in basic, once we get all of our movement, well, we just send the movement off and let the rest happen. In client prediction, uh, we set our own players X and Y, and we still send it off because the other side needs to know about it. But inside of the movement code up here, uh, we have a check. We say if the me if the movement message that comes through is for our own player, just ignore it because we have already updated our player. We don't need this message. Um, but then finally, we get into lag compensation, um, and lag compensation is where things get a little wild. So we have you know the main WebSocket WebSocket code, and that basically doesn't change too too much. And we have the movement update, and this doesn't change at all really. Um, what really changes is this. Um, when, when uh, this, so this runs every frame, and this, uh, the job of this code is to slowly transition each other player from their last known point to their current known point. And we do this with uh, functions called lerp, and lerp um, basically moves from the start towards the end um, smoothly, and um, smoothly is time. So we take our current time and we take it by the, the intended duration um, of the entire movement and we know what the duration is because the server tells it to us. Um, and then we slowly move it from point A to point B um, over that duration. Uh, it took, I'm not going to lie, it did take a lot of time to get this uh, working correctly because when, when you're, and this just goes to show like all I was trying to do was just get players uh, sl um, players moving nicely from one position to another and yeah it takes time it's hard to debug and uh, honestly it can get a little frustrating and this just goes to show like uh, multiplayer games are harder um, you are dealing with all kinds of real world factors that ordinarily you just don't need to care about like does one person have a slow computer eh. you know if they're playing the game on their own what does it matter but as soon as you've got several other people playing the game with them you actually have to start making uh, really tough decisions about how does your gameplay cope with these things. Anyway, that's a small tangent. Um, yeah, so the crux of it is that a movement message, that when a movement message comes in this time, 
rather than applying it straight away, we push it uh, into an array called positions. And then what happens, what happens down here is that um, every frame, we grab the player, and each player has a movement plan. And basically, um, if the, uh, once the movement plan, which is you know from A to B, once it's finished, you grab a new position, and you uh, you grab a new position, you set it up, and then you recreate the movement plan, saying this is its start x, this is its end x, this is its start y, this is its end y, and over the next duration, you will be lerping it from one of those to the other. And so you basically have this array that's um, got the player positions that it needs to go through, uh, and the game gradually just uh, smoothly moves it between one of those from one of those to the next. I realize this has been a huge information bomb, um, and I'm sure it's heck confusing. Um, and I'm also aware that this might not be the easiest example to run because uh, I'm not actually sure what it's like for other people to try and run this Go code. I've got no idea. I'm not. I, I admit I'm a little ashamed to say, but I'm not entirely sure. If this will work on, if if it's compiled to work not on Windows, if it will only work on OS X, but I have included the source code. If you are uh, keen to run this demo yourself, um, I will put a link to uh, GoLang. Uh, there you go, um, and there's all kinds of instructions for like how to set it up and how to go for it. So uh, I hope this will be useful and. Uh, it's certainly been a really big learning experience for me, and it's. Uh, I'm certainly when I try and make multiplayer games, I'm going to be using uh, these web sockets in the future. Um, you know, I realize I should have earlier explained what web sockets are, but I missed that opportunity. Good stuff. Uh, web sockets are just a built-in browser way of talking to servers and sending information really quickly and receiving it really quickly. Um, and it's basically the go-to recommended way that web games like GDevelop um, do multiplayer. Cool, that's a lot of talking. So I'm gonna cut out now, please. Let me know what you think. Was this useful? Uh, did I babble on too much? Do you want to know more? Do you want to know less? Um, or is there something you wanna see in the future? As always, have a lovely day. And see you next time.